I'd like to call the Bloomington Historic Preservation Commission meeting to order for Thursday, March 23rd, 2023. Um, Dee, would you do the roll call? Marlene Newman here. Doug Bruce. Daniel Slagle here. Sam DeSoller here. Matthew Seddon. John Saunders here. Elizabeth Mitchell here. Allison Chopra. Bernard Cross. Duncan Campbell here. Kirsten Hawley, Ernesto Castaneda, Chris Durbaum. Ah, Renard's here now too, D. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, we need a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. D, would you do the recall? Marlene Newman? Yes. Daniel Schlegel? Yes. Sam DeSoller? Yes. John Saunders? Yes. Elizabeth Mitchell? Yes. Bernard Croft? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Dee. Um, all right, so let's move on to uh, the COAs. Uh, we have a stock review of COA 23-10. Um, Gloria? Yeah, so this is just a very quick recap. Um, Petitioner Kelly Easton had requested a temporary sign for Cabello at 106 West 6th Street. After reviewing the application, uh, staff actually denied this of a, a temporary sign and requested resubmittal. The petitioners did not see the message. Any of the emails never responded. They put up the sign, then they quickly removed it when planning called them. And now we're just waiting for a resubmittal. And the basically the observations that staff had was that the sign should in some way um, just go a little better with the with the the patterning of the fenestration and the sizes and everything um, just be a little bit more subtle um, be because in the end when they did print it out it was very big and just hanging and flapping from the awning um, so yeah so that has been it's a basically closed case but I'm actually really hopeful as staff that they will return with an alternate design and uh, we'll see what happens so mm -hmm. yeah that's it for staff reviews great thank you Gloria all right, let's move on to COA 23-14, 817 West 6th Street. And I see um, uh, Mrs. Scott is with us. All right. Um, yes. Gloria? Sorry, let me um, allow Jen to unmute. So uh, Jen Scott uh, petitioned for the replacement of five windows. Um, so these are original two by two windows. And this is in the near west side. It is ideal that when a historic window, if it can be restored or repaired, that the option be explored, as well as the possible installation or, or change of storm windows. Um, the guidelines are currently being updated for this historic district to reflect the community preferences regarding their historic material. The window sizes and proportions do need to remain the same so as to minimize the visual impact of the material change. And the petitioner um, actually submitted the window design for the two over two pattern, which had not been included in the packet because the petitioner had to request their manufacturer to rework the design. Um, so staff does recommend approval for COA 23-14. The Near West Side commented that the, the committee did meet and there were a few uh, people in the committee that really wanted a two over two thought it would be more appropriate, but in general was considered a suggestion. And the committee in general did not see, have a problem with the proposal. So the, this is an image of the front and side, and this is another image of how the house looks like now. And these are the new windows um, as have been um, submitted 
And uh, the petitioner is online. Sure. All right, Jen, do you yeah, have any uh, do you have any additional information for us? Um, I think she she basically covered it. You know, the initial window that we had proposed didn't have the uh, that vertical grill, which I actually prefer the look of this, and I'm perfectly fine. So I had the manufacturer, um, you know, provide a, a updated rendering with that that vertical grill piece so that it mimics the two over two, um, you know, as close to the original as possible. Um, but yeah, I mean, really, it's a it's a matter of you know functionality. Unfortunately, they're just so far um, deteriorated. I don't I don't see them coming back um, as much as I would love to. Um, it's a you know energy and functionality question, really. Um, but would love to keep the keep them as close to the original look as possible. So this is the updated uh, rendering. Great, thank you very much, Jen. Um, Sam, do you have questions? Uh, yeah, for the petitioner, uh, do those uh, muttons, the vertical two over two things, are those both on the outside or on the inside? Are they between the glass? Uh, how does, what's the, how do those work? Sure. Um, you know, <clears throat> they are on the outside and the inside. So these, this, um, this slide that we're on shows that, you know, they are um, reflected both ways. I don't know if the if the question is, like, if the glass panel is actually physically divided. I don't think so. Yeah. I presume it's probably an overlay on either side. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they, like, cut the glass. Um, but I don't, I can't speak to that 100%. I, I, you know, I'm not sure. I have to ask the manufacturer. Gotcha. Nothing further. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Uh, Marlene, questions? OK, Renard, questions? Daniel questions, Elizabeth questions, yeah. Duncan questions. Mm -hmm. I haven't got any questions. There's nobody. Um, yeah, I don't see anybody. Do we have any questions from our group here? Okay, great. Thank you. All right, so we'll move to comments. Um, Sam? Um, as Gloria mentioned, the uh, neighborhood is updating their um, their guidelines. So we don't actually have historic district guidelines. We just have the uh, conservation district ones. But uh, in a meeting, what, two days ago? Um, the the yes. neighborhood is moving towards sort of historic district light and don't want to really regulate, as far as I can tell, uh, this sort of stuff. And although I am a big fan of original windows, and I'm sad to see the original windows go, this is not what the district wants. So I'm not going to stand in the way of this one. Thank you, Sam. Thank uh, Marlene, you. comments? I just want to make one clarification. It's like it, the existing old wood windows with a mm -hmm. thermal pane are equivalent to, energy-wise, to a window that is double pane. It's pretty close. So there's no energy. If you're, if you're, going, to re, if you're going to keep old windows and put a, another piece of glass. Oh yeah, it's certainly. It's equal. And yeah. the petitioner said that there was a difference and there really isn't. So that's not one reason to get rid of old windows. Correct. That's all I just needed. Understood. Okay. So, and it was cutting in and out a little bit there. Um, that, that's, that's actually good information to know. Um, I know. It's, I, I really hate it. The, the, it's the, the functionality of them. Um, well, can, I, can I ask a question? What is... Yeah. What is wrong with the functionality? Just a question. It seems to be warping of the wood, like swelling and warping of the wood. I mean, the with the uh, the rope, you know, the, 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 obviously on the rope. I mean, those would need to be replaced because a lot of those are missing. But it seems to be um, okay. more of like expanding and contracting of the wood um, is also an issue with them just being able to open and close. Well, because there there is another product. That doesn't require, you know, take. I mean, it's not e not hard to replace the rope, but there is another product from the 1930s that is made out of um, airplane wire and a spring, and it works really well to raise and lower these mm -hmm. windows. When we had some really big old wood windows, it were yeah. There was no room for a, and it was. Well, you can re re also can retrofit those yeah. um, with um, um, vinyl tracks on each side. Yeah, this is bad because <clears throat> you don't put the vinyl tracks in, you don't change any of that stuff, and it just it goes up works. and down, and it's beautiful, and you don't even see them. Yeah. So it's, it's I mean, if, just if you have any suggestions, I'm certainly happy to yeah. explore alternative 
Well, I can, I can send you or send the link to yeah. Gloria, yeah. and then Gloria. Gloria can. Yeah, I'd be happy. I'd be happy to do that. I mean, I do. You know, like I said, I, I really also like the original Windows. It's really a functionality Which, issue. Uh, but if you have any recommendations for me to explore, um, I'm happy to do that. They're, I mean, they're really easy to install. They're Mm -hmm. They and those windows are be are kind of beautiful. Mm -hmm. The original ones are with yeah. the portions yeah. and the so. Okay, yeah. I'll send Gloria the link to the. Yeah, the please do. Okay. Um, Renard, any comments? Uh, Daniel, any comments? <coughs> Um, after what Marlene said, I just appreciate the petitioner being willing to look into those options, especially one that might help save the originals. I just appreciate that that openness to to work with that. So yeah, I absolutely. think that's great. I grew up in a house. I grew up in a panel, you know, the old original windows, and I love them. They're they're great. You know, I, I awesome. don't necessarily want to see them go. So if they're, I just haven't really, um, you know, been able to find you know any options that are going to be of the way of, you know, getting them repaired or functional, but if you, if, yeah, if um, the committee has any suggestions, I would be more than happy to look into it. All right, thanks. Uh, Elizabeth, any comments? No, no comments. Uh, Duncan? All right, I don't have any comments. Uh, we'll need a motion. I'll make a motion to approve COA 23-14. Second. All right, D? Marlene Newman. There is a motion made to approve the COA, yes. which is true. I guess that. Uh, if she's looking for other products and maybe a different solution, what do we do? Um, you can either. Oh, okay. Okay, and um, Daniel Schleichel. Actually, I was going to say, Gloria, what? What you were going to tell Marlene? I had the same question Marlene did, but I wasn't able to. So you could quickly. vote for abstaining or against. Okay. You can make your vote, and depending on how the vote goes, you can make another motion. And then if we do say yes, but the petitioner finds the Marlene's suggestion is is viable, would they have to cancel this one to reapply, or how does that? No, that they, they would not need a COA to repair the windows. Um, if the repair doesn't go well, they will still have, if this is approved, they would still have a COA to re- back on this yeah. to be able to, okay. yeah. uh, I'll vote yes then. Uh, okay. Marlene's changing her vote there, D. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Okay. Um, Elizabeth? Yes. Did I miss anybody besides myself? Sam! Yes. Yeah. Okay. Renard. Yes. All right, and, and I vote yes to D. Okay, thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. All right, thank you, Jen, for coming. And you will work with um, Gloria, and she'll get you the links to the other things. Thank you for being here. All right, let's move on to COA 23-15, 25-21-15. District, district. All right. Go ahead. Okay. So, 2521 North Fritz Drive, um, the petitioner, Tucker Jarrell, is requesting the removal of a three season room on the back. So, it's basically a par uh, partially covered back porch or deck and the concrete pad, and then replacing it with a larger room, pretty open room with heating so that it could be a four season room. Uh, the proposed porch replacement uses the recommended materials of stone, concrete, and wood and would be located on the back of the building, even though it is visible from a main right of way. Staff recommends approval of COA 23-15. Thank you very much. Okay, is, wait. Oops. I haven't shown you the, sorry. Sorry. The Matlock Heights Construction Subcommittee um, is okay with this proposal. Um, they have different comments such as great design, looks great, works well for me, it's well thought out, and they hope that Bloomington HPC will approve the COA. Here is some more context. The visuals are very, this is just a personal bias. They are very lovely architecturally. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is, here you can see the location to the right. Um, and here are uh, more photos. This is the current deck, how it looks like. So it's a screen, basically a screened-in porch. 
this is another a rendering of what it looks like. Here is a rendering of the all the area that would be removed with this proposal in bright red. And uh, here's another image of what would be removed with the floor plan. And this is the proposed uh, addition, which is a bit different. It's, a, it's more enclosed and would have a chimney for heating. It does use the, the a low, a low roof. Um, yeah, and here are some more renderings of how it would look like. Okay, and now I hand it off to you. Thank you. Um, is the petitioner with us? Uh, give me one second. Let me see. Can you raise your hand using the raise hand feature if you are online, please? Uh, Tucker. Give me one second. Right. Let me. Um, mute him. Here we go. Thank you, Tucker. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Um, do you have anything to add? Um, no, I think that's pretty much the extent scope. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so, um, Duncan, do you have any questions? Uh, Tucker, is this a, a three season room original to the house? Um, from what I've seen on Elevate, yes, it is. And what's the date? It, seems, what, what's it the, seems like they, I'm sorry? Data construction. Um, let me, I can give you the text in one second. I'm pulling it up right now. Um, looks like, it's full. Um, I don't know. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm on elevate looking at the data. But you think that the three season room is original? Well, so, you know, it, it, it appears to not be, but when I go to elevate and when I go to the summary of improvements, I don't see it listed on there. So I'm not sure mm -hmm. if it would be listed. It says construction year for the house, and I can't speak. So that, that answers your second question. Then. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Duncan. Elizabeth, any uh, questions? No questions. Daniel? Yes, sir. Bernard? Merlin? No questions. Sam? Yeah, I've got a question. If you go to um, sheet, it's, it's the elevation that says like 8301 or something in the packet. Uh, that one. Uh, and you've got the siding called out as number four, but that number four is blank. Can you tell us what that siding is? Yeah, so um, budget willing, we are hoping to do limestone here. That's really what the client wants to do. We had a discussion about uh, board and bat and cedar, but um, since that <clears> discussion, <throat> the client's pretty um, strong on having limestone in here. So there may be one accent wall, which is um, showed in the elevation speed, that smaller wall where the outdoor shower would be. Um, that still might be a line, uh, might be a steer, uh, board and batten, but the rest would be a line here. But the rest would be what? A lot of in here. So you don't have any lap siding anywhere? No, this is, this was an older representation um, before we had made that final the client a few days ago. Right, so the, the rendering is more accurate, and you're saying a board, a cedar, unpainted cedar board and batten? Um, so if you go to the renderings, yep. most, most of the addition will be a limestone veneer, and then there will be one cedar board and batten accent wall. So I guess, I guess what I, okay, can you, is there a, a drawing, I'm confused now, because I was assuming that the elevations and the, the renderings might match, but I'm a little confused about, can you sort of, is there a rendering that shows the existing house uh, materials? Yes, yeah, so there's the limestone, the existing house is all limestone. So all the limestone will stay, question mark? Because it looks like there's some board and batten going in 
on that, that rear facade. So I don't know where the transitions happen and how they happen between the limestone and board and batten. So I'm unclear yes, as to what right. you're... Okay, so right now you're looking north. And in the addition, yeah. if you can please show the addition rendering. Okay, so, so Marlene's showing, yeah. it made me go to A201, mm -hmm. and everywhere where you've got like this lap siding stuff shown, that's now gonna be uh, board and batten? No, that's gonna be limestone veneer. This is gonna be limestone. This might be There's one wall, it's a very small wall. It's on the right of the addition, it's got a little outdoor shower. That wall would potentially be vertical board and bed cedar, but the rest would be a limestone veneer on the addition. Is it this one that I'm pointing? If you look at the owl camera here, where we're at. Um, let me try to make it big enough so I can. Yeah, I know. It's never. Um, I, I think that you're. Uh, I'm trying to make that the biggest thing on my camera. So, so. No, you're good. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to be able to see it, unfortunately. Okay, it's too small. yeah. So we're talking. Um, I guess you can see. Okay, you can see in the plans how there's the bathroom on the the left hand side. The yeah. Left, you yeah. know, the new addition bathroom. So you can see the vanity on the opposite side of the vanity will be on that exterior wall will be the outdoor shower. That small wall. It's like the smallest. Right here. No. That one. one. The board map is here. The rest is lined up here. Okay. Yeah, this is the shower. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, it looks like these two walls are. Yeah, okay. Um, is there anything, is there a drawing that shows it how you actually want it that you presented? Um, no, because this was a new development uh, within the last few days from the client, but I can provide one uh, if you would like. Um, I'm going to let my other commissioners ask their questions. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Um, did I start, did I start with you? Did I, did I start with you on the questions? Yeah. So you were the last of the questions. So we're in comments, right? So we're moved to comments and Sam, we'll just start with you. Um, I was going to initially compliment you on how uh, clear your drawings were until we got into this. And now I am, um, like, if you have a, a veneer wall, uh, you know, it's it's veneer, and if you're changing from one material to another, then you know, I it, it I I don't. I'm an architect, and I hate it when people use like materials like wallpaper. Um, so I'm I'm, right, yeah, I'm concerned about. Like, wait, let me so finish. Let me finish yelling at you. Um, so I'm concerned about the the transitions between one to the other. Um, that said, this is the back of a house. The overall form doesn't um, preclude the style of the house. It's not negating that. Um, but I, I think the original uh, uh, three season porch was uh, more elegant. I mean, as long as the neighbor, does the neighborhood say anything about this? They, they don't they're have an issue? Yeah, they're, they're, all all for it. they're all for it. I don't, I mean, I have mixed feelings is I guess where I'd go, so. Because of the siding um, or? Because of the presentation uh, that has, it feels like a, a little bit of a bait and switch that I don't know exactly what you're proposing. Uh, and I don't know, um, I mean, I, it's very, very clear. I think the drawings you did that show what your, what your demo plan is, that those, that's fantastic. That's incredibly clear. And I wish everybody would do it like that. Um, that said, uh, you, we don't have a drawing that shows what you're doing, and that really bothers me. Yeah. That's all I got. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Sam. Marlene, comments? Oh, um, so I kind of agree with Sam. Um, one of the other things you, you might think about is if 
I mean, if you have an outdoor shower, you probably want some shielding or something. So you might, if you're desperate to use that kind of wood somewhere, make that sort of a short wall that, go, that extends the wall that's behind the shower, and then you have like a little alcove, and the rest is kind of, um, is kind of still stone. Because it, it is kind of an arbitrary, it's really kind of arbitrary. I thought for a while that maybe the bathroom was the enclosed shower, which then you could disconnect it from the roof and make it a material change, and it would have looked good. But um, I guess I would just try to make the whole thing uh, stone, yeah, stone, and then if you desperately want to use that other material, use that as the sort of a, it looks like an attachment instead of part of. Great. That's, that's all I can say. Thank you, Marlene. Uh, Bernard? Why an outdoor shower, though? I, is there, is there, a, I, I, uh, the client is going to put an inflatable hot tub on that concrete patio. Um, and I also addressed the concern of having an outdoor shower pretty, you know, she's pretty close to her neighbors. Um, but apparently they just put a big fence that she's, she doesn't really have a concern about that. But yeah, she's, she's going to have an outdoor hot tub in that area. So she, she requested an outdoor shower as well. And maybe I'm not looking at the plants close enough, but where is the water from the outdoor shore going to drain away to? I'm sorry, did someone have Yeah, to drainage for the water coming from the shower. What's, what's going to happen with that? Sorry, repeat one more time. Is there drainage for the outdoor shower? I don't see that oh. anywhere. Is it just going to drain um, off onto the lawn or, or what? You know, I'll have to address that with the structural engineer. He's still working on the last details of the drawings. Okay. I don't have any more questions. Oh, well, it's comments. Oh, it's comments. Um, I think there should be drainage for the outdoor shower. <laughs> <laughs> Point. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, well, we would like to think that yeah, would have it. and it would be nice to actually have it there. Sure. But thank you, Bernard. Uh, Daniel, any comments? Um, kind of, I'm trying to form out like Bernard, I'm trying to reformulate a question into a comment. Uh, <laughs> or you could just ask me to ask a question. I might do that. So would we be able to, to ask them to come back with the finalized drawings with some of the updates as Sam pointed out or the drainage as, as Renard brought up? Gloria, I just don't, I just don't remember. Um, is the March 8th, is, that's the day that they filed, so how long do they have? I know it's a little while, they right? They have until August 8th. Is that, sorry, August, <laughs> April 8th. Uh, a, the month, sorry. April 8th, the next meeting is April 13th, but um, an extension can be granted for this case if that is the wish of the HPC and with the willingness of the petitioner. If not, then it would have to be denied. There are some, op those are kind of the options. The donors I'm asking is with, um, with the client having recently shifted some of the, the material for the outdoor and everything, just so we can get a better idea on what's gonna, um, be put in place was the only reason I wanted to, to check on that. And thank you for the for the dates on that, Gloria. And that also makes me want to ask: Has the neighborhood committee seen the new stuff, or if they've been looking at what we've been looking at? Um, Are there comments? They've been looking at whatever the owner showed them, because I asked them to submit, show the neighborhoods as soon as possible. Um, but I also sent the neighborhood, I always sent everybody the packet. Mm -hmm. So they, I assume, have had access to the new or, or the, the information in the packet. Thank you. Okay. Elizabeth, any quest comments? Um, really quickly, Joel Keeper, who's going to be the manager on this job, mentioned that since, and he just made a comment, since we're adding on the bathroom, we could add on the outdoor drain that we're going to the shop. It's just not a representation of my drawing yet. Okay. 
Maybe help you. Doug, <laughs> hang on, Marlene. I'll get right back to you. Let me let Doug can make comments. There no, actually, no. Oh, yeah. right, Elizabeth. Uh, well, I, I, I have, you know, for obvious reasons, I agree with what's been said about we want to see we want to see plants that are what's going to be built. Um, although I, <clears throat> I'm not totally, conf I'm not very confused um, by the, the rendering that shows, I don't know what page it is, A201. Uh, the one with the elevation, no, the next one, I think the next one down. Yeah, that, I, I'm not very confused by the form and how it functions with the rest of the house, which is pretty important, but my, I, my comment is, the reason I ask if the, if the three season room was original is because it's so distinctively mid-century. It, yeah. it is so, such a defining characteristic. I don't care if it is on the back. It's the thing that makes this house important in this historic district. And so you're taking off what I consider to be the most important aspect of, of the historiosity of the house and you're replacing it with something that looks just like somebody might want the house to look today, but doesn't look anything like a mid-century addition. Um, as compatible as it is, and as I can see how nicely it will fit and how usable it is as a all-season room, um, that's, that's my primary objection to the design of it. And also, in general, when you put additions on historic structures, you don't imitate the siding, you try to dis make it distinctive. So making it all limestone is going to even hide the fact more that it's an addition. And, and I'd almost prefer, I, I don't particularly like the siding the way you've rendered it or the, the notion of board and batten siding either, but um, it is important for additions to historic structures to be distinctive, not to fit in as well as this one apparently wants to. So I, I, I sort of feel like it's misdir the design's misdirected because you're taking off the best part and you're putting on something that is kind of boring, to be honest. Um, that's my comment. Thank you, Duncan. Um, you know, I, I tend to agree with Duncan. I think we'd like to find out about that uh, uh, addition, not the addition, but the original structure and if it was built at the same time. And I think we'd like to find out uh, about the drainage and about the siding. Well, we'll um, take care of the drainage. It's not, so, it's not be an issue. Um, do we have any comments in here? Any comments online? If anybody online has comments, they can use the raise hand feature, and I will <coughs> invite them to unmute. Um, we need a motion. Do we need, do we need the, uh, the petitioner's um, uh, permission, I guess, for an extension? Wait, Joel asked to be unmuted. Sorry. Joel? Hi, I'm, I'm Joel Kiefer, uh, project manager on, on Tucker's team for the project. Um, I, it sounds like we're going to get a motion to extend and return with the correct rendering that shows exact siding? Is that what you're asking for and then we're good? Uh, that's not exactly, I, I would argue, what's going on. I think that's one thing that we would like to see. And I think that Duncan has also brought up the fact that uh, this addition is basically diminishing the, um, the, 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 uh, the historic impact, the historic importance of the house. And so, you know, yeah, I, you guys, you guys obviously are, you know, help preserve our community. We're appreciative of it. So uh, you know more about this than than, than I do. Um, that room, from our evaluation and from the client's evaluation, it, it is not the the highlight of the house by any means. You know, it's it's the it's the knotty pine paneling inside and the, the limestone veneer and in her opinion and, I, and so the room is fairly uh, cheap you know it's a, it's a cheaper sunroom kit that you would have bought in I don't know I don't know when it was put on 68 
to 81. I don't know. If not, um, I, I guess perhaps we need to bring some other uh, pictures of the structure as it stands because I think that might help with some clarity. And we'll, we'll, we'll take care of everything and get it all done for you. Sucker, thank you so much for presenting this. It looks good to me. We're, we're pretty proud of it. Okay. So, Joel, you can find out about the existing room and, and what's going on with that and maybe when it was added and then come back to us with um... sounds good John thank you so much you guys okay so I, I will or can I can I more comments please yes Tucker uh, I will say that I, I agree with uh, whoever spoke on the fact that we don't that, you know it's not ideal to add limestone uh, veneer to a limestone house and if you want an addition to be um, different materiality-wise from the exterior, but the client really has her heart set on um, you know, we do proceed with this project. She really has her heart set on it being limestone for as well. We tried to, which is why I showed the side of this image, because we tried to explore panel options. We tried to explore a lot of different things. And she really has her heart set on the veneer. Mm. Okay, thank you, Tucker. So are you, Joel, are you guys agreeable to an extension until our first meeting next month? I am, yeah. You are, Tucker? Yeah. Yeah, Joel. He's still muted. Huh. Give me a second. I need to. Yeah, there you go, yeah, Joel. I'll, I'll, we'll make whatever work. All right, Thanks. that sounds great. Um, <laughs> So we don't need a motion, do we, or do we? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Uh, what's that? So moved. Okay. To postpone our... No. To the next old. meeting. Okay. okay. And to the 13th, and Marlene seconded. All right, D. Okay, Marlene Newman? Yes. Daniel Slagle? Yes. Sam DeSaller? Yes. John Saunders? Yes. Elizabeth Mitchell? Yes. Bernard Cross? Yes. Motion carries. All right. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Tucker. We'll see yeah, you both thanks, next guys. we'll see you both next month, okay? See ya. All right, thanks. All right, let's move on to um, COA 23-16, 336 South Euclid Avenue. I know our petitioner's with us. Thank you for coming. Okay. All right, Gloria. Yeah, so 23-16 is, um, let me, sorry, I'm trying to do, having technical issues here. Um, the petitioner is requesting to replace uh, doors on the house and on the garage, eliminate an rear egress door and replace the asphalt roof with black gray architectural shingles. Uh, staff comments that the front and the garage doors maintain the size of the fenestration or the proposed. The pro um, the pro and these are the same doors we saw the last time, so the same sort of com conversations can continue to be ongoing. Um, however, the yeah, the egress door does not um, can be argued, and this is something for the HPC to also determine, that the egress door does not require a certificate of appropriateness uh, as, as it falls outside the scope of the guidelines. The roof currently has three tab shingles, which are likely not original, but architectural shingles are commonly found in the neighborhood as well. Um, the subcommittee, these are the same comments for the two proposals that Tim Devine brought tonight. So the majority of the Greater Prospect Hill Historic District Design Review Committee have weighed in and they find no issues with the request for the two applications. Okay, and here is a map for 336 South Euclid Avenue. And the map uh, mentions the doors, the two front doors to be replaced and the non-egress exterior door towards the back, and then the replacement of another door with a new door. And there, here is more information with the images of the different doors as they are right now. Ah. 
sorry. And this is the, the new door that would be replacing, or the new door design that would be used as a replacement. And this is the, these photos, sorry, they're copies of copies, but imagine that there is three tab and then the shingles would be asphalt. And so that being said, the staff recommends approval of COA 23-16. And with that, I leave it to the commissioners. Thank you, Gloria. Tim, do you have any additional information for us or comments? Just that the, the existing doors have no security, no integrity, no insulation, and I'm trying to put in, my neighbor just to the south has the exact same front doors, just a different color. I mean, I'll, I don't know what color I'll do with these, but um, that's it. Other than I hate the aluminum siding, and uh, if I didn't have to spend a crazy amount of money fixing the electric knob and tube and plumbing and everything else inside, I'd probably be going back to, I'm assuming it's, you know, wood siding. That's someday in the future I want to do that. Sure. And then I did, um, the roof company, AMI, said that it is 3D, I guess three tap, so architectural, 3D, and then they call it um, landmark. I guess it's all the same, same, same. Thank you. At least that's what he told me. And that's what it's called, so. All right, thanks, Jim, appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Um, so, let's see, Sam, questions? Is, is there a, a design committee in Gerber Prospect Hill? Yeah. What did they say? They said that they have weighed in and found no issues with the request. Gotcha, thank you. Okay. Um, Marlene, questions? So, there are two doors that go from, there are two doors, right, that go Visible, from right. the inside to the outside. There's actually three. There's two on the front porch. Actually, there's four. There's four. Okay. Two so on the front porch. There's a two on the, yeah. That one, and then that one. Okay. There's one on the garage. Also. Oh, there's mm -hmm. one the on the garage. The garage is separate from the yeah. house. Yeah. So there's technically five doors. Can I just look at that? So, okay, the doors are, where are the, oh. Mm -hmm. No, there's the one you can't see. Go, go, see go back the to the plan where you were. I'm just curious where, the, where they are. There's two more. So that's one of the front doors. This no, is go the, to the, the, the line drawing plan. Can you go to the plan? I don't seem to. There. Okay, so where, there's a door. There are two doors in the front. Mm -hmm. and those are, they're keeping those two. I see. Right? They're replacing these. They're replacing all the doors. them, but they're keeping the opening. Mm -hmm. right. And then they're getting rid of the one. They're removing under 84. Oh, okay, got it. And Okay. I just don't understand because those are becoming bedrooms. Do you have to have two, two no, emergency access from the public? I mean, it, it seems really redundant to have them coming from the bedrooms that you have to have a window. Well, the windows are probably too small, so they're using them as egress. Right. <laughs> Keep up. No questions, Cameron? No, I just am curious about the okay. emergency egress from the front. Oh, that's all. And thank you. I don't really care. Bernard, do you have any questions? I did talk to Bobby LaRue about egress. Excuse me? I did talk to Bobby LaRue from the county about egress. He said, um, I explained that there's going to be a problem with the shingles and the egress. He said, I explained the situation. And he said that, um, A, the house is grandfather. So you don't even have to meet the window opening code. Um, no, I, I get that, but so. I think that the idea that there are two exit doors, it, pre it, it predates the, that's always been a code, is code thing, so. Yeah, I explained saying, it all to Bobby, but there'll still be three doors, there'll okay. be one in the rear and then two in the front. Um, but are they coming from the public, or are they coming from just bedroom? Just curious. Um, it'll, the rear one will be through the kitchen to the bedroom, and then the front will be the, there's a bedroom, and then the front door. Oh, you still have two public egress? You still have two public egress. Yes. That's what I'm asking. Yes. Yeah, okay. I mean. But not know, through a bedroom. Yes. What's that? 
Uh, one is through the bedroom in the front, one is through the bedroom in the rear. So the one that I'm eliminating is the one that's currently in laundry room, and I'm turning that into a bathroom. So it's the one back in that corner. Um, so I'm just, I mean, Bobby told me your, your grandfather. He said, it, you know, you have to have a front door technically, you know, so I don't you might have to have a front door and back door. That's my point. Because if somebody's in the bedroom, the door's locked, and the other there's a fire between whatever and the other exit. There's no secondary exit. Yeah, I guess I'm not an expert. I'm just Bobby said your grandfather based on the. But what I, the windows are grandfather, but I don't think the doors would be. Then you should go back and ask them. Well, I did file for door. permits. So I did file for permits with the county, so the county will be doing inspections. Well, you, you should them. ask them that specifically, because I think it might be a code issue. Yeah, I'll, I'll double check with yeah, I thought our permit was Samson. Yeah, but Arlene, if it's a code violation, yeah. he wouldn't have to bring it up to code unless he's changing dimensions or doing something different. But he's, he's closing the door. That's, uh, that's well, yes, and that's off of the laundry room. But that's fine because that goes directly outside. Still, that's still okay. e that's egress, and so he's got the front door and no egress, back door. And no, now he's got right. no back door, and the other doors, the other two doors, are going through bedrooms. And the whole point of, of that is to be able to get out of the. And if you have a bedroom with a door, bedroom door locked, and the other exit, the two bedrooms with the other door locked, and there's a fire between wherever and the exterior the, the front door, door the bedroom front door has access but it's through it's through a bedroom no the front door is in the living room so, okay, so the front all, all three bedrooms can get through the front the main front door but there's no back door at the point the back door would be through a bedroom yes and i don't think that's legal okay. yeah i mean i i mean the county i guess they're going to be inspecting, but I'll talk to Bobby specifically. I'll ask Bobby to come out to the house and look at it. Well, I think just for your own uh, mental sure. and insurance and everything else, I don't know what you're going to do with Yeah, no, house. I agree. I, uh, that's why I always bring the homes right. to yeah. as much code as I can because I don't trust insurance companies paying claims ever. Right. And, the, and the door thing has, has been there in perpetuity, I think. The two doors, and it predates the requirement for a, a certain size egress window from the bedroom. That's that's all I'm telling. Yeah, I'll I'll have I'll have see if Bobby could come out because I think it's it's kind of their is it their jurisdiction technically because they inspect all the permits and everything, right? Thank you, Bernard. I'm. This is my general question. Does a change that is a code violation, can we still approve that change, even though we have reason to suspect that it may be against code? Pardon? 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 Sorry, can you repeat the question? Sorry. Okay. Okay. Pardon? Yes. I'm sorry, no, I was just saying, if there is a change that's being requested of us to approve, and we have information that this change may be a code violation, do we still go ahead and approve that change? Uh, well, I think you have to look at And Chris uh, Wheeler, are you on? Because I can, I can answer, and then you can back me up Chris, or disagree. Chris, Chris yeah. is on. Yeah, my, if I'm on, I'm listening. My, my uh, answer, Renard, would be that your um, you're not tasked with knowing necessarily whether something is up to code or not. You make the approval, and then the building department and others who would do the inspection would decide whether that's up to code prior to the work beginning. So, um, and I'm sorry, I'm mostly observing. I haven't heard what permitting processes have been investigated or done yet, but I would encourage the petitioner. Sorry if I'm repeating information. Is that to? Yeah, uh, I've applied for a permit. Okay, so, so I would encourage. Uh, that to continue and then if if the building department it reviews that permit and decides something's not up to code then they're going to let the petitioner know that's I don't think that puts the HPC in any 
hot water are for we us. kind of doing it backwards and isn't it kind of a waste of time to approve it then have the whichever organization that determines whether it's code or not then say it's not code for them to redesign it for them to come back here why not just have them do the design have it Yes, and then bring it here. I don't see. I mean, I, I don't see that as being illogical. It's it's just a matter of how the HPC wants to handle what the petitioner's done thus far. So, Chris, do you have any anything to add? Uh, I'm just going to say, John, that uh, what you said is accurate. The, the board's not. I I can appreciate the board being concerned about code and whether there will be code violations, but it's not this board's jurisdiction to concern itself with those things. Um, certainly the the uh, person who owns the real estate and the people that that person hires to do the work will need to be responsible for making sure that whatever they're doing meets code. And there are other governmental entities that have to review these plans and make sure that whatever they're doing is accurate in accordance with code. Uh, whether this is in advance of and and somehow putting the cart before the horse, I don't know that it is, uh, because as we sit here today, we don't know whether what's being proposed actually is or is not uh, uh, grandfathered or a you know, code violation or anything like that. All right, Chris, thank you. Marlene? Well, I mean, that's part of the problem is that the drawings are insufficient. And normally, you would see a plan you know, with well, but can we expect a single homeowner to hire an architect to draw plans? Well, when there are interior changes, that I, I would assume yes, because it's not just a, I, they're not just. I'm not sure if that's something the commission can place on a homeowner, is yeah. to hire somebody to do. We're, we're not concerned with the interior of the home. We're concerned with the exterior of the doors and whether those fit uh, in with with your historic preservation reviews. Okay, but I'm 90 percent sure that. This won't fly with the code. <laughs> That's all I can say. Well, it will leave it up to the okay. building we'll program to make those decisions. And it would have been a lot easier. I mean, in the past, we have required drawings, at least when there are changes. I don't know if they're exterior changes only, but this is. Exterior changes. So does changing a door, is that an exterior change? It is. It is. Taking the door out as you're moving, and that's one of the reasons why I have the commission. So then I would say there should have been plan drawings to show what the intent was. I'm okay if it's, there's a subject two or something where um, if the commission were to decide to approve it, subject to the, if, if the building department says that it doesn't meet code, then the door, I mean, it sounds like a jurisdiction issue, but I'm, I'll work with you guys. I just don't want to wait again until another month, because technically in how the process is, what I've read, you have to get approval first for a COA before you can even apply for a permit. So right. I applied for a permit because I know the county approves permits pretty quickly, but then they go to the city planning department and they sit for six to eight weeks before they even look at the permit. Um, so I know Marlene may feel it's covered for the horse. No, no. It's, I, I just know. think for your own safety, you ought to point that out. Even well, the, the, even I actually brought it up to Bobby. I said, yeah. Bobby, I'm going to be filing for a permit. I showed him what I was doing, and I'm like, you know, and Bobby's the county, in charge of the county building permits that would approve or not for stuff like that. But I'll, I'll ask him that it came up in the meeting, some people were concerned, could you actually come out to the house? Just to protect yourself, draw a plan. You draw a plan, not an architect or anybody else, of what your intention is, to show where the circulation is, where the exterior, where the egg egress is, and where the bedrooms are. I mean, you know this. It's not a big house. You could do that, just for your own your own benefit. I, I don't really care from the perspective of the of the um, commission, but as an architect, I think you should think about that. That's all. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think we're in comments. Am I right? Or we still? I've gotten lost. Are we still in questions? Yeah. Oh, questions. Stop technically. Okay. Daniel, do you have any questions? No, I think all might have been asked. Yes. Same with Elizabeth. Yeah. Duncan. 
Okay. Uh, I have any questions at this point. Um, so let's do comments. Duncan, we'll start with you. No comment. Elizabeth? No comments. Daniel? No, I can't read that. Renard? Uh, I mean, the experts have um, confirmed that it's not our purview. So I will not allow it to be a factor in my decision. But I mean, I'm a bureaucrat. I like things to make sense sometimes, especially when it's taxpayers' dollars. But I'm going to have to suspend my need for Thank you, um, well, back today. I've talked enough. Sam. Um, two quick comments. One is uh, the owner might consider if they're putting, you know, blocking off that door in the laundry room and they're going to make it a bathroom. Um, if they're worried about security, maybe make it a window. Um, I, I would approve a, um, an additional opening back there. Um, the only other thing is there's a million ways to solve internal circulation issues, and our purview is not, as was probably said, with the inside, it's just the outside. So that's the process. Um, I'll support this. Thank you, Sam. Um, so we need a motion. I will move to approve. 2016. Oh, yeah, 23 16. Thank you. Second. All right. Dee, will you do the roll call? Marlene Newman? Yes. Daniel Slagle? Yes. Sam DeSoller? Yes. John Saunders? Yes. Elizabeth Mitchell? Yes. Bernard Croft? Yes. Motion carried. All right. Thank you, Dee. Uh, Tim, you're up again. Uh, we have COA uh, 23-17, 918 West 4th Street. So, in 23-20, sorry, 23-17 at 918 West 4th Street, the petitioner Tim Devine is requesting to replace the front and the side door. So staff comments that the front and the side door remain, retain the same size of the fenestration. The proposed replacement design for the door has a different design, but is generally compatible with the historic district. Um, and the comment from the Greater Prospect Hill subcommittee was the same. Um, they find no issues with the request in the applications and here are images. So here is the plan and the map for for this house. And here is the view from the front. So this is the, the you can see the front door and the side door in this image. And again, it is the same um, same door that uh, design that would be going on the other property. Right. And the staff recommends approval of COA 23-17. Thank you, Gloria. Tim, any additional? Okay, great, thank you. Sam, questions? No questions. Marlene? No questions. Renard? No. Daniel? No. Elizabeth? Duncan? Nope. All right, have we got any questions? Should we move it? Any questions from our audience? Raise your hand, please. Okay. Uh, comments, Sam? Yeah, I guess the only comments I've got are like, the six panel doors obviously aren't original, the only original door with this one, and even the last one was the side door. And those are a little more cottagey. The door that they're proposing is a little more craftsman mm -hmm. but you know, Compared to the, the six panels, they're better-ish, but I, I'm going to support this. Thank you, Sam. Marlene? I agree with him, but no comment. <laughs> no comment. Bernard? No. Daniel? No comments. Elizabeth? No, thanks. Duncan? No. No comment. So we need a motion to approve. Uh, I'll move to approve COA 23-17. And I second. Mary D, the roll call. Marlene Newman? Yes. 
Daniel Schlegel? Yes. Sam DeSoller? Yes. John Saunders? Yes. Elizabeth Mitchell? Yes. Bernard Cross? Yes. Austin Carey? Right. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Appreciate you coming in this evening. All right. Let's move on to COA 23-18. 1017 West Howe Street. Okay, so the, well, is the petitioner with us? Um, John Hewitt from the city of Bloomington is online and he is representing the owners. Okay. So the petitioners are requesting the removal of the chimney and replacement of two windows on the south and west sides along the kitchen. Um, staff comments that the windows and chimney are not located on the public facing facade. However, the chimney is visible from the front and is part of the massing of the building. The chimney removal does constitute a partial demolition and the chimney is in poor condition. Um, uh, we do, I believe we do have a representative, Richard Lewis online from Greater Prospect Hill in case Greater Prospect Hill wants to comment something in person, uh, like live. Um, this is the location of the property, and here are some images of the house for more context. So these would be the windows to be re replaced towards the back of the house and the chimney, sorry. And that's the chimney to be removed. Um, so um, John can speak more about this, but we suspect that the uh, staff suspects that the chimney is not um, original. That is something that can be discussed this, um, with the commission further. But with that said, staff does recommend approval of COA 23-18, and I hand it off to the uh, HPC. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, John, uh, do you have additional information for us? Hello, can you hear me? We can. Okay. Um, I have not removed the, the final siding that, that um, borders the two sides of the chimney that are, that, that's there, but the, the way it's framed, um, there appears to be uh, siding behind the actual, the original siding of the house is, appears to be behind the chimney that's in place and the the chimney itself uh, is um, very deteriorated. There, there are lines, uh, you know, the first three or four feet up from the ground. There are cracks that appear to be the the, the brick uh, splitting away from what is behind that that particular, um, you know, down to the the uh, lining of the chimney. So the, the brick, you know going up at least as high as the window that you see sort of behind that chimney uh, in the view there on the on the left hand side of the screen um, that's that's split pretty severely to the point where that's more the reason that we're taking it out than the fact that it just doesn't look as good with the chimney there um, can I ask what the uh, what, it, what it's used for it is it is benign. It they don't have a wood stove in that particular area, and the furnace uh, in the house is um, not vented through the chimney at all, and neither is the water heater. It's simply something that was tacked on, I think, for a wood stove in the in the living room at some point. Um, but there's there's nothing there, not even the you know, the opening covered with the little metal plate that you see in a lot of homes. Thank you, John. Um, questions? Duncan? And those windows that are being replaced are on the rear addition, is that right? That's correct. Um, you can sort of see the <clears throat> extended roof line in the, in the photo on the back side of the house showing how they, they sort of changed the, the pitch and added added a bathroom and a bedroom and, and part of the, um, I guess what they call the mud room, or laundry room in, in the inside the house uh, on the back side that, that 
sort of stretch the exterior. So yeah, that it's the addition on the back side has these these windows are um, uh, sort of a, a wood frame window that um, we see a lot, uh, or I see a lot. Excuse me, in rental rental properties throughout the city that uh, to me appear to have been installed in the 70s or 80s. Um, not a not a really good quality window, and and they don't. Um, work well for the the owners of the home. They just want to have something in there that that has a double pane glass and better insulation factor and uh, provide them with a, a nice, easy to open window in in the bedroom and then also in that mudroom on the the southeast corner of the house. All right. Thank you, uh, Elizabeth. <coughs> Daniel Renard Merlin. You have a question. We're in questions. Okay. What are you going to do with the space once you remove the chimney? What are you, what are you going to fill that with, or how are you going to deal with the siding? It's, it's the uh, the proposal for this particular project, and you guys have uh, this, this commission has seen the project this project before. Uh, I was. Uh, I was incomplete in providing information on the work right up to um, Gloria when we, when this was brought before you before. But we're removing all the vinyl siding and actually going back to wood siding, paint, and and uh, you know, turned um, turned four by four post uh, pillars holding the the front porch up instead of the. Uh, faux wrought iron that you see there. Um, basically, the the, uh, the plan is to bring it back to a, a more traditional look for the neighborhood and, and have it match the houses to either side that have been uh, sort of had, had that facade treatment where the, the vinyl has been removed and, and the wood restored to um, its place. Thank you. Exciting. Thank you. Uh, Sam? No question. Okay, comments, Sam. I'll prove this. Marley. Seems like a great project. Bernard. I have no comment. Daniel. I think it's good. Elizabeth. Okay. Did I tell that? Siding replacement, that's not part of this COA. That had been approved. That's already it. been approved. Okay. Um, Richard Lewis um, raised his hand. Uh, Richard. Let me ask him to mute. There you go. Hi, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Richard Lewis, Prospect Hill resident and uh, member of the uh, Historic District Design Review Committee. Um, sorry, when you all started commenting and saying that uh, you're inclined to approve, I probably don't need to say anything except that I would chime in and say, yeah, the, the existing chimneys look atypical and not uh, original um, based on the, the design of most of these houses where the chimneys were interior uh, to the house. So this would not uh, cause any issues as far as the removal of original materials uh, in that sense. And then, yeah, the other windows are all away from the public way facade, so they would not uh, factor into our concerns on that. So I, I wouldn't see any objection from the Greater Prospect Hill Historic District on that. Thank you, Richard. Um, any more comments? Okay, we need a motion. Move to approve COA 23-18. Second. All right, D. <clears throat> Marlene Newman? Yes. Daniel Slagle? Yes. Sam DeSoller? Yes. John Saunders? Yes. Elizabeth Mitchell? Yes. Bernard Croft? Yes. Motion carried. Great. Thank you, D. Um, thank you uh, for coming. All right, let's uh, move on to COA 23-19, 339 South Fairview. And I believe our petitioners are with us. Yes, we are. Thank you for coming. All right, Gloria. So the petitioners are requesting to add a dormer to the secondary facade facing the south, as well as there's three uh, different things that are being requested. Adding the dormer, 
Then adding an egress window to an existing dormer on the front on the west facing facade and raising the gable on the north facade by 20 inches uh, in order to comply with um, comply with um, regulations code. with code sorry <laughs> thanks uh, so the new pro proposed dormer on the secondary facade constitutes a change to the outline of the building but is consistent with the existing dormer the window on the existing dormer of the primary facade is currently a single or, or double hung vinyl window, which needs to be replaced with a casement window in order to meet egress code. And finally, the I don't have anything written here, but the the change to the so here you could see this this is the first this would be the proposed new window, which would be double hung with the new dormer. And then this is the egress window for the kit. For yeah, so this is the second one where there's currently a, a hung window that would be replaced with a casement window. And then finally, the third issue would be raising the roof uh, in this one corner by 20 inches in order to comply with code. Um, and yes, the three things do constitute shifts and changes in the house's outline, but they would allow the house to be um, livable and put up to compliance without uh, the changes being extremely drastic. Therefore, um, staff does uh, recommend approval. Again, I don't have comments from the Greater Prospect Hill Construction Subcommittee, but I believe we might still have Richard Lewis here in case um, he would like to comment. Yes. Richard, yes. Um, yes, hi, I'm here. Thanks. Um, the, as far as I know, our designer review committee has not uh, had a chance to review this. Um, I have had some informal email conversations with the homeowner. Um, about some interior suggestions that might alleviate some of this uh, issue, but that's uh, based on the interior framing that's already been done. That does seem to be a possibility. Um, I I don't want to weigh in as a single committee member at this point, since there's not uh, since our, our committee hasn't had a chance to review this. Um, so I, I I may sit back for a moment. Okay. Thank you, Richard. Um, additional comments for us? It's all pretty much laid out there. I don't know uh, what else to comment on unless somebody has specific questions. We're going to get to that. All right, thank <laughs> you. All right, Sam, we'll start with you. Um, sure. Uh, I mean, this, I'll float an easy one first. On the new dormer that's centered under the uh, peak, that guy, you're matching the roof slope, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. For the most part, yeah. And then it also says you're relocating the aluminum siding to clad that guy. Right. So the north side of the house, uh, that's, that's it's not visible from anywhere actually except my neighbor to the north, yeah. um, has had to be reworked in a number of different ways, and all the aluminum siding has come off of that, and yeah. we've saved it just for purposes like this to patch up and fill in where we can. Yeah. And it's only temporary until we get the funds to actually reside the house. Yeah. And then we'll come back and talk about that. Okay. <laughs> um, and I guess the other question I have is there's a note pointing to a little part of the house that says raise the roof by 20 inches. How's that going to happen? The goal would be to stay with the current roof line uh, and continuing it up alongside the, 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 the ridge to the pyramid. So basically no continuing it up the same, same direction so it doesn't change the way it looks at all. It would just be a little taller. Uh, uh, can you go to an elevation that where that's? Um, I don't know if I have an yeah, elevation. Do um, I'm not sure we included one from that angle because that was very last minute. Is, is there a, a, a Google Mappy thing that we that's can look at? That's what I'm working on Sweet. right now. Mm -hmm. Give me one second. Sorry. Let me see it from. 
Um, there's a. I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find out. We've got a tree. We have a tree issue. That's not the house. Oh, that's house. not the house. Wait. House issue. <laughs> Sorry. You're gonna make it look just like that when you're done. Uh -huh, here we go. That's a tall order. Three thirty-nine South uh, yeah, about, about six blocks north of us. Yeah, yeah, we need to go south. Oh no. What? You're they have north. Eighth Street in Harvey. Yeah. Yeah. South Give me one second. We want South Fairview. The, this, I think this is better. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Here we go. Okay, here we we still have a bit of a tree issue. Not as bad, but here we go. We might could do a plan. We might do this as a plan too. Look at it, uh, the map. Yeah, look. Yeah, just look at that. That light view. We can. Yeah, turn the. Give me one side second side. while yeah. I. Here we go. crazy slope thing on the back and yeah I think okay that um, gets me to where I know enough to not know what I'm knowing I'm gonna try to elevate <laughs> yeah, go down to the next person <laughs> thanks John you're welcome Merlin questions well I would say I'm okay. really, but also also um, I don't Maybe you could just use the same window, the, um, the casement window in both cases instead of the double hung. Double hung. Because the, the double hung is kind of really, the proportions are so important. And maybe doing the... You're saying, suggesting in the, in the new dorm, I do the, do the casement window as so well. Yeah. Absolutely, I'm totally on board with that. that the, we had a, uh, I had an inspector consultation after I had already applied for the dormer uh -huh. um, who, who said, you know, you might as well, this needs to be egress windows up here. And so I, I didn't update that, but that they would like I think doing it to match is the way to go. Thank you. Yeah. Right there. No questions. No questions. Daniel? Sure. Elizabeth. Duncan. I understand where the roof is being raised, but I don't understand what the requirement is. What why does that have to happen? Uh to add appropriate headspace and room for insulation above a shower. So that, there's a, what is there, a single room upstairs, a bedroom or something? Is it, it's actually two bedrooms and two. with a Jack and Jill bath. I see, so the headspace, you, you need headroom in there. Exactly. I see. And, you're, and I thought that was the least intrusive way to do it versus building on a chunk out or a monstrosity of some kind that looks really awkward, whereas just extending that gable, just making a slightly taller gable along that same ridge line would maintain as much of the character as, as humanly possible, which was the goal. And that's going to change the pitch of the roof. Yeah. It would. Why? But that roof runs continuously across to the dormer. So where's that going to break? That's, that's the, yeah. No, it, it stays yeah. along the ridge. So the gable and the, and the ridge of the pyramid meet. So we would just move that along the ridge of the pyramid up 20 inches taller and then come off the back side of it, which is completely out of sight from any public view. Oh, I see. So this front pitch stays the same. Exactly. It's basically making a slightly larger gable staying in the exact same angles that are already there. Gotcha. Thank you. I don't have any questions. Uh, so move comments. Uh, uh, Sam? Uh, okay. Um, so I was going to make a suggestion, which uh, I'd like the petitioner and the commission to consider. And that is, since the, the neighborhood co committee hasn't had a chance to look at this yet, um, and since some people aren't as good at visualizing this as Duncan, um, I would suggest you do a real simple elevation of showing where that extra 19 inches or whatever it was is going to be. Float it in front of the neighborhood committee until hopefully you get a good reaction. And then uh, come back on the 8th? 
13th. 13th. I keep saying the 8th, I'm sorry. 13th. Next time, uh, in a couple of weeks, and show it to us. Um, I mean, I, I don't think we're going to necessarily have an issue because you're trying to do this as sensibly as possible to the, you know, the massing of the house. Um, and, you know, code changes and, you know, people get tall from eating vitamins and stuff. So what are you going to do? But um, if, if you'd be amenable to something like that, I think that might be the path of re least resistance. It really, uh, gosh, that throws off my time frames by a substantial amount at this point. Uh, you're under, you're under the gun, right? Under extreme duress. <laughs> gotcha. Um, well, uh, yeah. So Richard Lewis raised his hand. Let me find him so I can um, ask you to mute. Richard. I thanks. I, I I feel like I'm bouncing in and out, and I apologize for that tonight. But I appreciate your patience. Um, having seen the overhead shot that, that Gloria was able to pull up there in, in, in GIS helps a bit because one of my personal concerns, and again, I'm not speaking on behalf of the design review committee, just as an individual on that committee, um, was how that north elevation or that, yeah, that northern, north facing gable height change would change the roof line. But if, if it's able to sort of climb up along this, the ridge of that hip, that pyramidal roof, without breaking that, you know, the height of the pyramid, which it appears to be, it would still stay under that. I would, I guess the short version is, I'm, I'm feeling more comfortable about this than I was going into this meeting, if that helps. But again, I, I, I can't say I'm speaking on behalf of the five member committee because we haven't, we haven't seen this formally. Can, can you zoom into the plan on that? This is about as much as that's I about can. as big as it gets. Can you yeah. Can you can. Oh. Well, I can hold up. Um, let's see if they have the. No, this still doesn't. Well, there I can do this. So which part are they talking about? So Duncan, can you help me? So where is the 19 inches? It's over. Uh, we're talking on the north somewhere, right? I'm just not you clear. Guys, I mean, I can, yeah, come yeah. on up, please. Yeah. So, well, it's hard to see up close, isn't it? Yeah. Um, wow, it looks This is your house, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, there's a there's a gate. This is the the top ridge of a gable, uh -huh. and this is the original hip. Well, there's they're both original, but the the, the, the pyramid roof we're talking about right. is right here. Right. And this roof line climbs right along that ridge, yeah. and is essentially seamless yeah. between the two. Right. And our rework would be to remain seamless just like this, yeah. um, but pulling it up, it, it becomes a little bit more. It's because it's at the angle. Yeah. To have the vertical height go up 20 inches, which means the hypotenuse is going to be a little bit longer, so I right. don't know the exact measurement. Um, but it would stay along that ridge line uh -huh. of, the, of, of the pyramid uh -huh. and essentially just move the gable over to about here. Gotcha. Um, and then maintain that. Okay. That same kind of moves, structure. Moves the ridge over. Yeah, two and a half feet. It's not that 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 does not seem like a deal breaker to me. It's gonna it play with the symmetry on that facade. Yeah, yeah. but nobody sees that facade. It's a, but that, yeah, I mean, we can barely see it. So I, I'm not sure. I, I think the street view is unaltered, basically. Yeah, and, that, and that's the you know the 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 main street facade. Actually, because you, you're stuck on a corner, you got two main street facades, right. and it doesn't really mess with either one of those. <clears throat> I've encountered, and to, there, there was a time in the 70s we were doing remodels all across the west side and there was, everybody was making their attic into bedrooms, everybody. And everybody was putting those awful plastic dome skylights on the roofs and everything. <laughs> but, there, but we were constantly faced with that, exactly that same problem where you couldn't get headspace oh. or code. But you could put an awful plastic dome skylight in the shower for the oh. extra headroom. Yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 that's kind of also nice. <laughs> 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 so, the trouble is going to be right where that gable that ridge is. The other ridge would look like a big zit right where those two meet. <laughs> And it would annoy yeah. Duncan even more. <laughs> so, just we, send him a picture of Christmas. Right. Yeah. Can we right, use a mobile? That's going to be true. Neighborhood Association. 
up with a positive recommendation or should we just postpone it until the 13th? Or should we go ahead and approve it? We don't have any motions on the table yet. I know, as far as exploring if we could allow the near what or allow the uh, not on Heights, but Prospect Hill Design Committee review it. And I'm just saying, if they didn't have any issues with what he's doing, that they could move forward. And if the Design Committee had an issue, then it could stop there and then come back to our meeting. What would be the aim? Just to allow the um, Design yeah. Committee to review it? Yeah. And if they review it and say they don't like it, then what does that? That means they come back to us. It's but not change my no. opinion because it's, okay. it's yeah. not. You don't, want, you don't want to set up a situation where no. they're approving it with our okay. It's the other way around. Okay. They can say whatever they want, but we're the ones who do the approval. Okay. So I would say I would say suggest taking a motion. I, I, he's position. under duress. He yeah. says, and I believe him. But Richard seems pretty happy. I mean, it's unfortunate that they haven't had time to meet on this, but that's not really our problem. <laughs> we are, we're the ones that have to make the decision about it. So if they, want, if they want to convene a committee and talk to the owner, they can do that, but that's not... Yeah, and I'm, I'm we're not enabling... Many time. Yeah. I, I yeah. And it's not our job that. to enable them. And, and honestly, if it, even if you approved it and they came back after the fact and said they'd have a problem with it, I would adjust it accordingly. Um, but as it is, if it's not approved, I can't actually move forward on anything because if it's not approved, I have to completely take out everything we've done upstairs and start again. Whereas if it is approved, I can start on that project. But until then, I would literally be sitting idle for two weeks. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Marlene. I just have a question about that roof. I, I understand you're moving it right up the gable, but so it's going to go up what over 20 inches. But then the other side, what are you doing with the other side? Because it's, it's not going to match, but it's also, like, is it going to hit like this? It's going to be a steeper pitch. Or is it going to be like this? So and it's going to be a wacky. On, on the back side of it, it was, we were going to come off as a, just for a practicality sake, we just come off of it uh, as a shed, but it's not visible from any from anywhere, again, except for my neighbor to the north. It's not, it's not visible. So it would stay below the gable ridge line because okay. that would take it up to the peak and, and so while well, the, the front gable would remain the same and it only comes let's say it's about four feet from where those from where the, the pyramid ridge meets the gable ridge um, it would be a shed about a shed style coming off at a, at a, a, a decline so again, it all stays below that roof line, so it would not change the front facade at all. But you can't see that gable from the diagonal to stop here. Well, and the gable would still, you would still see just the gable. It, everything takes place behind the gable line. It doesn't extend all the way out to the exterior wall. So yeah, there's, um, from where that ridge meets that we're talking about, there's about 10 feet to get to the exterior wall. And our, all of our adjustments are within four feet. I'll take your word for it, but it's good. So I, I have, as staff, have a wacky idea. I'm just going to throw it out there. Yeah. And I don't know if this is going to make anybody happy or everybody upset. It's just an idea, so you can ignore it. Um, but um, And Chris Wheeler, you can chime in, John, and everybody else. Um, but if the, the issue is just making really sure that that gable is, is going to look well, but also not limit the owner's ability to work, is there an ability to give a partial COA for the first two items if the commission thought it was okay and then ask for a return with additional material on the third item? Or is that like some, I don't know, it's just an idea. If I may comment on that, again, if this gets denied, I literally have to rip everything out of the upstairs and completely redesign, moving the bathroom 18 inches, uh, 18 inches in and 18 inches north, uh, uh, sorry, south and, and east of where it is, which 
completely redesigns everything yeah. that's already in. So it, the other stuff doesn't actually, well, the windows matter, the, the, the casement windows, but the other dormer is sort of secondary in terms of its. Yeah, but as Seth, I wasn't saying denial, just more time, but that's just an idea. Again, if that's a problem, I'll, I just threw it out there. <laughs> It would be nice to have a roof plan and a, an elevation. Which, is that the north side? Mm, yeah. It would just be nice to see the elevation, just like you've drawn the other elevations. Right. Because I, I really don't, because all I can see is something that's not symmetrical at all. And I don't even see how the the lower, it's, it's going to hit like that. I don't. Unless you change the slope of the other one, and then I kind of wonder why don't you just bring it up a bit to keep it symmetrical. But you know, bring the wall. But why is it important it like to be? Why is it necessary to be symmetrical? Well, there is. An, I do believe you'd probably be able to see it from Fairview Street. And it's going to look a little wacky. I'm gonna kind of give you an idea. Yeah. So. This moves over, and this gable would look essentially the same, but slightly larger, right? So instead of being here, it's you know about like there. Is it, isn't that but, where the ridge is moving up the up the other ridge? Right. So it's moving there. Right. Right. So. But then the the additional on the back side of it stops about right here. It's 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 not going all the way to where it would be seen from any direction, because because of the slope of the pyramid roof here. Mm -hmm. Just being able to take it from a steep to just slightly less steep gives ample room for what we would need to do. So it, it and it's only a, a bathroom, so it, it's not like it has to be, you know, all the way out to the end. It's literally only going a, f a few more feet, and, and so instead of taking you know all ten feet all the way out or something like that, it literally stops right back here and is all hidden behind that ridge. Everything takes place once the ridge goes up. So is it? It's not going up like at the facade. No, no. That that'll just look like the original gable oh, it was. Okay, that's, yeah. that's okay. I get it. It's Sorry, I, I, I apologize for not being <laughs> clearer on this, but it was. I get it. It was yeah. a, a last minute thing, and I was really grateful to Gloria. It's going to be. It it's going to be a, a non a, a, a lump on the top. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, if you go seek it out, but you would have to be trespassing to seek yeah. it out. Or flying. <laughs> or flying. You really right. You really exactly. Right. Yeah. Able to see it, except from. North, east. Okay. Any more comments? All right. We need a motion. This one? Yep. 2319. Yeah, a motion to approve 2319. I second it. All right. D. Marlene Newman? Yes. Daniel Schlegel? Yes. Sam DeSoller? Yes. John Saunders? Yes. Elizabeth Mitchell? Yes. Bernard Cross? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you, Josh. I look forward to seeing you at our house one more. I'm looking forward to the invitation. I will be in contact. <laughs> exactly. I'm allergic to Thank you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've moved through. Uh, all our COA, so we're going to move on to section 106 reviews, and uh, Gloria's going to give a presentation on that, and I'm sure Duncan can fill us in on some stuff as well. Okay, so these are um, four different cases, and don't worry, there's going to be a few more coming up. This is just a potential beginning to what could be a very long uh, conversation, or it could literally just be the beginning and the end of this conversation. Um, these are different requests for HUD funding, uh, CDBG funding, uh, for different uses throughout Bloomington and the surrounding areas um, that uh, require an archaeological study and potential impact to the uh, surrounding area. So the two things that I need to know from the HBC is, for each of these cases is number one, 
Um, do you consider there to be any, are there any comments of a potential impact that you consider could be damaging to historic properties? And number two, and these are separate questions uh, because uh, I will compile the responses and send them to the Division of Historic Preservation and Archaeology. Uh, and the second one is whether you would want to be a consulting party if and when anything does, maybe nothing is found and the case is closed, but in the potential case that archaeological, it, there is an archaeological impact or an above ground impact. So um, any, is that, Am I, is that clear so far? Yes. The HPC has always been a consulting party on every 106 petition. So I don't think that's up for vote, really. I mean, that, okay. that we don't we don't choose not to be. That's part of the role that we assume as the mm -hmm. HPC. Okay. So and and historically, the staff person has conducted that 106 review, um, not brought each 106 review to the full commission. Okay. So I'm just I'm just not I'm not trying to load your agenda, but I'm just trying to say that normally we don't hear all of, the, well, for instance, we don't go out as a commission and survey every site to see what the impact is. So if you have a, if you have a 106 that's happening in a historic neighborhood, then we can discuss what that impact is going to be, but there's clearly going to be impact. Okay. Okay. Because so, so what usually happens is you describe the, what the, the nature of the project and show the geographical area and if and and in your maps you show in some of them where there are contributing structures and, no, and notable structures and so on so whenever there are notable and contributing structures within that those tight vicinities we want to look at the project to see if we think it is is likely to have any impact so if there are street changes or there's a huge demolition or or anything anything like that so one of these is on Sayre Road, where there, to my knowledge, aren't any, other, unless there's archaeology, there, there isn't anything, okay. any historic structures. Okay. So normally what happened would be you just do a description of what, what the project is okay. and, and, note, and note from your own notes whether there are any historic structures in that area mm -hmm. and, and, and what the, what the Sounds good. I, I just, um, because the procedural letters I have are an invitation to consultation to eight different parties and yeah. the HPC is one. Well, I wanted to make sure we were all on board and I, I wasn't shoehorning in something. Since the, the County Preservation Review Board ought to be a consulting party. When I was, when I, when I had a, when I had a private consulting firm, I was always a consulting party. So any, any preservation authority, private or public within the area is usually considered on the list of consulting parties. Well, Duncan, you might be the one person here to see these twice. <laughs> see, so, so for instance, I would always look at the, who the consulting party mm -hmm. list was because sometimes they'd leave out Indiana landmarks. Well, that's that's not right. Those are the, you know, the, so, that's the state authority. Yeah, so. yeah. No, and um, so for a little bit more background, the programmatic agreement that everybody, that I sent to everybody mm -hmm. last year that was being renewed has eight official consultant consulting parties including two uh, native native peoples yeah. of tribes. Uh, tribes of Indiana and um, the HPC is one of them and then the procedure always says invite everybody to consult and therefore I, I'm just following like you know I'm still learning so this is very good to know that being said if the HPC is going to always by default be a consulting party or opt in although I don't know if in this case the HPC wants to opt in in all four maybe you want to that's fine um, if if that's the standard then I'm uh, you know Perfect, because I still, I always, ha I will have to be managing all of these anyways, so don't worry about piling on more work. I already had to go and do all of the work, so it's all good. I just want to make sure that all of you get your voice in with these, and. Go ahead, I didn't mean to. No, no, it's good. I'm just going to add that, it, I'm going to just give you an example so people here know how this might work. We had, uh, when the Johnson Creamery um, owner wanted to put uh, telecommunications uh, equipment on top of the the smokestack and lease that lease that smokestack for an installation of telecommunications equipment 
that a 106 had to happen because telecommunications licensing is federal. Okay, so when federal monies are, or licenses are impacted by development, you have to have a 106 review process. So that's, that's, that's historic preservation law at the federal level that, that mandates what, you're talk, what, what 106 is. So in that case, they hired a private consultant to do the 106 review, and the man was from Illinois. Well, he never came to Bloomington. He never apparently surveyed the local area. And so he missed that this was within range of the Second Baptist Church, which was a, which mm -hmm. was a local historic district. He missed that the Johnson Creamery itself was on the National Register of Historic Places, and he missed that it was in a National Register district, okay? So he basically just didn't do his job. So, the, so as a consulting party, we went, wait a minute, <laughs> of course there's negative impact. This is a historic building. You know, and then that's when the mitigation started. So that's when you start to negotiate how to settle the impact, you know. So the reason you have consulting parties, especially local ones, is because they are eyes on what's going on and frequently the 106 process is done at a distance. Mm -hmm. The thing that's the problem with 106 is it's always the instigator of the project who is mandated to conduct the 106. Well, that's like, asking a developer if there's any problem with this project. You know, so, yeah, so as, as a certified... So a, that's why, we're, that's why yeah. you want to have local consulting parties. Yeah, and, um, and I, I'm definitely available to talk more about this. Um, as a certified local government, we have that... Um, we do have to comment on things, so you are correct on that. Um, so that said... We'll just be a consulting party to all of them. Yeah, okay. That's yeah, sounds, that sounds good. Uh, so we do have the first, uh, so bioretention ponds, four bioretention ponds throughout Bloomington. The first one would be placed on South Sare Road. Uh, and again, like you can find issues with some, if but not all of the sites or parts of the sites or the APE, the area of potential effect it can go beyond the site as well so yeah the first one um is south Sarah road pretty new buildings and um right across another retention pond that exists the second one is in this is uh yeah between sheridan drive and southern drive south down drives near bryant park and there are a series of contributing houses that surround it. Um, it's across the street. So you can, as the project happens, and if there is anything archaeological found underneath by the Division of Historic Preservation and Archaeology, or by the builders when they start working, then um, we can start talking more right now this is the i'm giving you the information i have like very preliminary for these and then the third and the fourth one are on around the 7th and adam street just west of where we are located there's nothing built on the sites per se there are some contributing houses surrounding these properties as well um, none of these are located in, a, in any historic districts currently. So this is the first uh, project I just wanted to show you. Um, should I go through all of them first and then the HBC comments, or do you want to comment on each individual? Do you actually one? have plans for what's happening? Like, like for instance, if, if, if there was a cell tower going in, you would have a description of a 200 foot. Yes. Yeah, so I do not. Um, I can request the plans for each of these. I have plans for the next project, um, the next proposed one. This came to me through the environmental review process, the NEPA process um, for HUD. And uh, because there is um, intervention, ground movement intervention here, the DHPA requested that the Section 106 process be initiated. And yeah, I, I could um, talk with the with the city of Bloomington U Utilities. I believe are the ones who. I mean, it, it, it's hard to evaluate 
uh, impact if you can't if you don't know what's going to be done if these are these are retention detention ponds you have to have some notion of how much area it covers what the outline of it is how close to the street street it is how close to adj adjacent houses you know we, we can't evaluate the impact without knowing <coughs> literally what it's going to look like Okay. And, then Street. and in the case of the one that's down on the south side where the um, dance club was removed oh. I can't remember the name of that place um, at the entrance to the to the uh, to the park Swiss Yard Park mm -hmm. where there's going to be I guess that's housing that's is that HUD housing that's going in there yeah the entrance to Switch Yard yeah yeah, they're pretty sure it's retreat. Off of Walnut Street. Yeah. Oh, the one. Oh, on, you're talking about on Walnut. Yes, yeah. the retreat switch air project. So, so, so that. On Rogers, sorry. There should have been, uh, there should have been a 106 review before there was any demolition. <laughs> so the second, the last two projects, the so the last two projects um, have a very very long story, um, in the sense that everything was kind of done backwards because. Or there was a misunderstanding between the builders and four different agencies as to whether they needed to go through the process or not due to the nature of the funds being used and due to a loophole uh, regarding tax exemptions on and on capital for the construction and where that those ex where that those tax exemptions came in and this was a back and forth for over a year between four or five different agencies and to this moment there is still a little bit of lingering doubt regarding the technicalities for both um, the Governor Park Apartments in Ellettsville which is the, the third one and with switch, the retreat at Switchyard because the original assumption was that the only federal funds coming in were for soft costs after the projects were completed and not which do not have the same level of review as when there is money or tax exemptions any sort of monetary gain regarding the 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 capital the construction itself so these are basically post construction for what it, you know uh, for most intents and purposes but the process needed to be initiated anyways so yeah this I mean, it's kind of <laughs> blank backwards if you don't know <laughs> if you have a demolition up you know prior to the issuing of the 106 I mean, I, if, if that had been a historic building we've been Deep trouble. So, and those trailers are that's that's questionable demolition. Yeah. Yeah. So this this has been an ongoing conversation for a long time with many many communications between the IHCDA, the DHPA, the BHA. Um, I get it. I get it. <laughs> So, yes, um, it, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at. It's not. And it's hard to do a mitigation when the structures in question are already gone. That is correct. <laughs> Somebody broke the law, to be, to be blunt. The federal law, by the way. <laughs> whether it's intentionally or not. All right. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to talk about the Adams Street so changes? The Adams Street, uh, there are partial uh, sidewalks already installed, but the city of Bloomington is proposing to install sidewalks from beginning to end. The packet actually has the plans for the sidewalk included. There are multiple contributing structures and on the other side it's already national register so this would be done on the west side of the street which is not within the national register but this is an area that the, the approximate it is approximate to a national register the west side district and there are one of these uh, contributing structures does not exist anymore because it went through demolition delay within this commission 
uh, uh, just before I started working here. But that said, there are six buildings still remaining that are uh, contributing along. So just to make sure that these buildings are not, um, well, it's not just the buildings, it's the site and the context are generally improved and, and rather than adversely affected by the proposal. So that's one of the things that the commission would be looking at. And the other is, just like in the other cases, if anything archaeological crops up, um, this would be a case where, if, if it comes to a memorandum of agreement for any of these, where uh, having the voice of the commission is extremely important. Okay. So we will be consulting on all of them. OK. Perfect. Any questions? OK, awesome. Let's move on. <clears throat> we have new business. We have a presentation. Barry is here to talk to us about the core building. And um, I believe that, is it Todd? And, and Todd, uh, Todd Rotman I'm gonna from Rotman yeah. Collier Make, is um, with us via Zoom. I'm making him a co-host so that he can also present or upload anything. Fantastic, but we can't see him, right? Um, no. I could stop yeah. sharing, yeah. His picture, he, does, he's not a, he doesn't have his video on. He does okay. Um, well, thank you for the opportunity to talk about this before we make an official um, application. Uh, we started on this project uh, several years ago already uh, through an RFP process um, that the city put out. And um, our team was selected. Rotman Collier is the um, architect of record out of, out of Indianapolis. And we're partnering with them locally. Um, as a local partner. Um, and uh, the developer, Brinshore, is a developer from Chicago who specializes in affordable housing projects and does a lot of work um, nationally and regionally. And uh, they are currently working with the Bloomington Housing Authority uh, here locally in the RAD conversion project uh, in, in uh, renovating all of their units. Uh, so this project will uh, go for a, um, affordable tax credit uh, as well as historic tax, tax credit. And uh, it is a project that uh, comprises uh, um, adaptive reuse of the existing core building and then a new addition. Uh, the building in total will house 38 units. They will, 35 of them will be one bedrooms and there'll be three two bedrooms. They will be what we consider um, affordable or deeply affordable, all of them, 100% of them. It's, so it's a partnership with the um, Bloomington Housing Authority and Centerstone, who will be helping to uh, manage and run the building once it's complete. Uh, so uh, I'm sure as everybody's been watching, uh, the buildings around the core have been coming down or down, and we've been able to get a really good look at the condition of the core building. And so when we make application for the uh, certificate of appropriateness, we will want to talk to you also about uh, what restorative efforts we are going to be focusing on the building. Uh, which will be on the northwest quadrant where the hospital came up and touched the core and, and really engaged with it pretty heavily. Um, but the intention, I will just say for this evening's purpose, the intention um, is to uh, restore the limestone and uh, restore the openings that were there. There were a number of um, window openings uh, that uh, were blocked in. Uh, because of roofs and other mechanical equipment um, that were accessing the building. And um, we, we do have a peculiar condition on the, on the north side of the north stairwell where we have some remnants, kind of like um, pilasters almost, concrete pilasters that were, that were poured into the building um, to support some of the, the structure uh, that was attached to it. 
um, and we want to talk to you further about that. Um, so, uh, but we kind of want to, we're happy to talk about the building, but we wanted to get um, some things in front of you tonight to get some initial thoughts and reactions um, on our direction for the design of the addition. It is a substantial um, addition. It is larger than the um, original building. Um, and I want to say that initially we had thought that we would have more land to work with. Our intention was to build a three-story um, addition. And um, that when, when um, actually J uh, Jackson was laid down, we realized that we had a lot less um, ground to work with. And so that caused the addition to go up one story. Um, our approach has been to reloc to locate the the addition obviously to the west of the core, since the east side of the core is part of its original context, being that that open yard, um, and uh, to to put the the addition in a similar location to the original 1919 building that was there, to which the core building was attached as an addition back in the 1940s. So we're approximating the location and the size of that building and um, creating that sort of dumbbell um, plan configuration. And if maybe if we advance the slide a little bit, it'll be much easier to read here. There we go. So we've got the core obviously on the, on the right side, on the east, and on the west, the new addition. And part of the, the, what we're working with and part of the challenge is that um, the larger units will go into um, the addition because there are a lot of requirements about specific sizes of units. And um, the smaller units will be in the core building. Uh, we thoroughly anticipate that the core building, the interior of the core building, um, has very wide hallways, being a medical building, that we will need to retain those. And so we have a lot less ability to, um, to add units uh, or larger units in, in the core building. So um, you can see that there would be two uh, courtyards, one to the north and one to the south. And our intention is to, uh, as close as possible, uh, relate to the overall north-south uh, width of the core building. So that's what we're doing there. And I will just quickly run through just a few, a few um, things just to point out, and then uh, we're happy to talk about any aspect um, uh, further. So um, this is, so that would be the ground floor plan. Just so you know, on in the new addition on the ground floor, there will be a resident serving uh, uses, and uh, on the ground floor of the core building, there will actually be units, and then there will be units in between, uh, sort of that little bridge piece or the tail um, of the core building, which is original to that building. And then you can see a typical floor plan uh, and sort of how things are disposed. So we'll be adding another set of stairs on the north and south just as the core building um, is configured. OK. OK. So um, if you want to keep advancing, just kind of giving people just a taste of what this is looking like. Todd, if you want to chime in, please don't be shy. Uh, so like I said, we're, we're, um, we're going to be four stories. But what we're trying to do is establish that direct, more direct relationship with the first three stories and the height of the core building. As you can see, um, we uh, are working with the same window sizes, um, matching uh, the window head heights for the units. Um, as we pull across, we're trying to relate to the fenestration patterns. I mean, obviously, we have a full um, building clad in limestone in the core. We cannot possibly recreate that um, with an affordable housing project. So we have, um, at this point anyhow, we're showing uh, limestone on the staircases on either end and on the front entry. 
and then uh, we're the there, you know, obviously the core is an Art Deco. It's a very restrained building, um, and it has some elegant detailing uh, in where the two upper windows are grouped together in a panelized system with um, some some detailing. We're trying to translate that in a more minimalist way into uh, a trim detail where we're grouping those those um, middle two windows um, to relate to that patterning uh, in order to get some shadow lines and hark back to um, the core building. So this is the west entrance of the... the exactly. Show. This is the west entrance, seeing the core and the back. And then... Um, and then we have, uh, so the core building, when you look at it closely it, from a distance, it's all limestone. When you get up next to it, actually the first, the first floor has larger scale limestone blocks. And then at the window head, there is a thinner, um, a thinner course of limestone, kind of like a belt, but it is, it is super subtle. And then as you go up, it goes to a random ashlar pattern. So what we're trying to do is to register that line also along um, the top of the windows on uh, the first floor. Again, to create some deference and, and, and create a relationship, um, but in a kind of a light touch. Um, the city, you know, the UDO is, is driving canopies, it's driving a lot of other um, elements that we're, um, we're showing to some degree, uh, but, um, but this, is, this is where we are at the point. So at this point, so we're, we're essentially envisioning a, um, a fiber cement board uh, building, panelized building, uh, um, recessed revills painted out uh, for it to look like more of a homogenous um, kind of, of patterning. So I will stop talking and invite you all um, to comment. Uh, we really do appreciate the opportunity to hear your thoughts early on. Thank you. Sure. All right, mm -hmm. questions? Raise your hand. Sam? Um, all right. Uh, so I guess there's a couple of questions. Okay. So you've got sort of a random ash floor on the stair towers to match the stuff on the original building. And then you've got the gray stuff, which I'm guessing is the fiber cement stuff. And what's the brown stuff? Is a board is a like more of a board and batten or a different a different material, um, a different a different. I think it's not exactly defined yet. It's a third material. Okay. Um, and then is, is the, that sort of cornice at the top of the um, fiber cement rendered in fiber cement as well? That sort of it would be fiber detail. cement, yeah. And the idea is that it's basically an application of materials and it's basically a what, one, two, three, four story building. It's a four story building. Yeah, and the stair towers have to, it, it, on this side the stair tower does not go all the way up, but on the other side, Exactly. We it have one goes up for roof, roof access. Yes. yes. So right. we've we pushed this stair tower down as much as possible to make it subordinate to the larger to the larger building. Um, but yes. And it's a flat roof. Right? It is a flat roof. Perfect flat roof. And then and the connector is original, as I think you said. Exactly. And then the courtyards are paved courtyards, both on north and south. They will they will be landscaped and paved. It will be a combination. This this courtyard facing south will be more of an active programmed um, courtyard. There is a community room on the on the southwest corner that will have a direct relation to this path, to this um, courtyard, and it will have um, what is that? Oh, pointer. Ah, <laughs> thank you. There we go. Um, and it faces south, so we'll get good light here. 
Whereas on the north side, um, you know, it, it'll be in shade. There probably will be some mechanical equipment. So we do want to create some space out there, but we, we're thinking of that as more of a contemplative, um, quieter space than this more activated um, side of the building. Is the garage, uh, Gloria, can you show the other side of the building? Then there you go. No, nope, not that side. That's the north. The north. The north. Yeah. The north. There so there's a some kind of garage door there. What's going on with that? So there is a um, maintenance, sort of a maintenance area with some larger, yeah, larger access into that. Yeah. And can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. We can. Okay. Great. So we are handling all trash internally and recycling. We will not have a dumpster outside. So the dumpsters are inside with trash compactor. And so that overhead door is to allow those dumpsters to be rolled out uh, for trash pickup in the alley. Gotcha. That's, I got some more questions. Yeah. So on, on this elevation, will you use the pointer and show us where the original building it starts and stops? Right there. OK. So that's all original to the left of that. Exactly. Except Everything for the else. garage. Yeah. Yep. And the pergola. And the pergola. Yeah. Which doesn't have to attach to the building <laughs> directly. I mean, ultimately, the National Park Service is going to. They're going to review this. Is, you're going to review this. You bet. And if you want to get a federal tax credit, you're going to do what they say. You bet. So, mm -hmm. so these hanging additions, if you will, and pergolas and stuff are questionable sure. ornament for a historic building that wouldn't have in right. included any of that kind of stuff. Right, right. Well, all of anything that's additional pergola-wise outside of that one piece in between um, is all in the new. But they're going to review the They'll new. They'll review it. They're going to yeah, review the new one just as strictly as they are the, left, uh, okay. the, the old one. Okay. So, because they're going to look at that compatibility, right, of the addition, particularly since you have facades that are continuous, right. So on the other side where you break, with the courtyard, this is a courtyard too. Well, but I'm seeing a continuous connection there. It's it's continuous. Oh, I see. It's recessed. It's back. recessed way back. Yeah. Yeah. Because it is sort of like a dumbbell shape right. with the skinny dog. So they're, they're, the they're sensitive about where the attachment happens and how it happens. Okay. And often look for some kind of invisibility at that line. Okay. A glass column. Okay. Or something that makes a visual break or lets light go all the way through or come all the way out. Okay. So that, so that there's a distinction between the new and the old that is literally so it physically doesn't look thing. like it's touching right, almost right. okay hmm. thank you thank you okay thank you um anybody else got marlene well having done one <laughs> yes i don't think that what duncan said is always true okay it's not it's a lot of a lot of times it's just a separate a difference in materials that allows you to separate visually the two right and i think you've done that really pretty well and um because yeah, the higher, well, it was the higher building. It's not anymore. <laughs> but you know that that building we reversed the we reversed the uh, entrance. A, uh, a you know re reverse the materials so that the the X's in the like key, there there are X's in the brickwork and that and those two things. It picked up on the brick from the original mm -hmm. building, and I think you've done all that. You know, you've, you've kind of done that, ex at least from my experience, having done one of these. So, um, yeah, and I think the plan's really kind of nice. I like the way the, um, the you know, the garbage is going to be handled because I, I don't really like, I wouldn't want to be in those two bedrooms, the one bedroom on the floor, but if, as well as you could possibly do it, you want it. And, right, and, you know, so, and I think because the new building is bigger in scale than the old building, those little pergolas or whatever they are, those attachments, they kind of bring it down so in much. a funny way, and the way you've used the materials, it kind of brings it down in scale. Mm -hmm. So it's not competing, even though that's a smaller building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think that you've done 
a laudable job <laughs> from Thank my you. perspective Thank and you. my experience. Could you show me the building from the north end, please? From which? North end. This is the north end. This is the north end? Yeah, that, um, that's, that yeah. is the north end. So I think I might have the wrong building in mind. Is this the building that's to the west of the hospital? East. No, to the east of the hospital. East. Uh, so it's on the, the old one. Rogers so and First. You might be thinking of the Hunter School yeah. building, which is on Second right. Street. That right, that's it's not it. No, it's not. No. This is a, because this is I googled corner. core building, and that's the building that came up. Yeah, this is the corner of Rogers and First. With a, it's kind of back on the hill. It sits up real high. Yeah, okay. It's actually 16 feet above um, Rogers so, Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's. It's one of those buildings that, you know, if you're driving, you don't necessarily notice because it sits so far off the street. Right. And you're, you know, and, and, and there's a bunch of trees in front. And, you know, even trying to photograph it, even in this season from the front, is a little tricky. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so we, when we, we're hoping to make application next Thursday to you officially. Um, and I, it would be helpful to us to hear uh, what other, in addition to any comments you have on what we've shown you, other things that you're particularly interested in or um, curious about so that we can make sure that we anticipate <laughs> your questions and provide that information up front. Sam? I didn't know we were doing comments, too, but oh, I'll yeah. yeah, because we're just, this isn't going to require anything. We're yes. just discussing it. This is just a... No, I mean, I, I think the way the building's laid out makes all kinds of sense. You're doing it on this up against the secondary elevation. I think, you know, popping it out a little bit. But I'm really concerned that the building, because of the program you're trying to squeeze in there and the land you've got, it dwarfs the, uh, the original core building. So that's the biggest concern I've got. Okay. The second the concern I've got is that the core building, you know, and I'm looking at it through the lens of differentiated but compatible, you know, from the uh, Secretary of Interior standards and all that. Um, the, the thing that the core building has going for it, it's a very simple, uh, basically, you know, a set of three boxes. Yeah. But there's a verticality to that. And oftentimes the interiors, or Secretary of Interiors, it's like, you know, pay attention to those details and echo them. But, you know, and, and it feels like you're starting to do that. But I don't think there's enough verticality in the building. And it's busy. It's got, you know, glom things onto it, especially because, you know, the, the back of house stuff, which is in the back of the house, which is good. But still, it feels a lot more of an assemblage than the original core building does. So if there's any way to simplify the massing on that, um, I, would, I would love to see that. <laughs> so, so let me just ask you, um, we were trying to break down the scale a little bit. And that's why, you know, when having that that uh, four-story material kind of come down and begin to kind of carve away a little bit, you know, because we've got this big block of limestone to the east, right? Mm -hmm. We can't replicate that. But we, we, were tr we were trying to do something that is a little bit, that, that hearkens and respects the core and, and, um, and, and really, um, What's the word? Uh, I'm blanking on something that, that works with it, but not really copy copy. So, it's so I guess it's important to us those panels that they read well, um, that you know that have enough that they're getting out there enough that we get that that you know that we're reading that shadow line. Yes. Right to get that. That's not there yet. It's one of the things I'm trying to say. Is yeah. it feels flat. It feels flat. And then the other piece of it that is concerning is that and it may be just the way that it's rendered that other material yeah. whatever that is it it because it's dark and it's so it, it feels much more massive and whatever you can do to make that recede because mm -hmm. um, it's it, it doesn't feel like it's receding okay okay 
Anybody else have a different well, sometimes one? Sometimes addressing that issue, sometimes the Park Service wants to see if you have if you have an addition that is larger than the original building, which is something that they really don't like, mm -hmm. just to start with. Yeah, sure. When you do, then they like to see you do everything you can to sort of reduce the impact of it visually. And one of the ways you do that is you set back the upper floor. Right, sure. And, you know, in an affordable housing project where every square foot really matters, that, you know, I think that's a point for negotiation. If I were doing a tax credit on this out of my company, I would say, I would say, yeah, I get it, but right. we need this square footage and this is a social right. issue here right, also. Right, right. And, but so, it, it, so it was along what Sam was saying, if it's, if dark is, is increasing the appearance of mass, then you need to make it light. And if, if, if it's a material change or whatever it is, even a one foot recession mm -hmm. is, you can, know, make is the can, make, can make that difference. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it's a token for square footage. But right. It might be something. Right. I mean, I might, I've done 45 of these. So mm -hmm. I, I've, I've negotiated with the Park Service on some stuff that I never thought would pass and uh -huh. some stuff that I just thought would walk right through, and they got me both times. Both ways. <laughs> okay. So it's really, it, you know, intention has a whole lot to do with how it's presented. and and really believing in the secretary's standards and, and quoting them at every moment when you write that part two. Okay. That's a, that's, so whoever your consultant is, they really need to be able to nail down that they're conforming to what's expected. And then when you do things that are, that are special or extra yeah. or design tricks or whatever, then mm -hmm. you talk about them in the context of, of the concessions you've made to the secretary's standards. Okay, okay, so, okay. You know, it's a, pictures you don't even know what is you know so they're going to be yeah right Good especially you're not you're yeah. not hurting it right and, and of course they look at the interior too so you got to really pay attention mm -hmm. and sure. not hurt what's interior to the original building right right and that's always a sacrifice because <laughs> the rooms are too big the aisles are too wide the ceilings are too high you know what we raised the floor a foot and a half in Byron's building Oh, really? Yeah, we jacked the whole floor up. And what they required was a little platform on the stairs that you could view the space. So you could see where it was and originally. Then, and so there, yeah. I think I found them to be pretty yeah. reasonable, yeah, actually. Yeah, in Johnson Creamery, there were eight floor levels in a two and a half story building. <laughs> and so, so, so accessibility. Right, it was so a huge We got issue. it down to two ramps. Wow. And so we literally took out beautiful tile floors that I never thought they would allow that us to sacrifice they... and poured concrete to level things up and they were fine with it. Mm -hmm. They didn't even blink, as a matter of fact. Was, was because we're going well, accessibility, accessibility, accessibility. Sure, sure. Going, yeah, 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 we get it. Well, it's a balance, right? Because yeah. you want these buildings to be relevant in the yeah. present and serve, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I think just from what I've seen, without even thinking about the interior, that I don't, I don't think this will have a lot of trouble. Okay. So, Great. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. Sure. Do we have any more? There it is. We are. It's getting late, and Ashley might get out a little bit early. Yeah. All right. Thanks so thanks, much, thanks, really, thanks for your time. Really, we really appreciate it. We look forward thank to you. seeing your stuff. Um, thank you. Thank you, uh, Todd, for coming. Um, yeah. We okay. Appreciate so, it. the next thing on our list is about commissioner attendance, and. Um, Personally, I'm, I would like for everybody to be in person now uh, instead of doing the Zoom stuff. And I think uh, Gloria is going to touch on a little bit about attendance. Yeah, so um, I'm really grateful for the people who are here. Um, I've talked to almost, at some point, I think I've called almost everybody at some point just to touch base, like, are you coming or not? Um, we have good quorum now. We've had some quorum issues last year about three or four times. We did have quorum issues and meetings were canceled. I did want to bring up something that a uh, crisis that was narrowly averted last year but has haunted me since then. We had a petitioner in the Greater Prospect Hill Historic District who applied for the demolition of two contributing structures in a primary location and full demolition for these two properties and we did not have a quorum when that COA was about to expire. The, the petitioner retracted their application at the 11th hour. 
So your presence here does have a visual and visible important impact on the landscape of Bloomington. And that, that just that one case, we've already had to give a few, just like send out COAs because of lack of quorum. But none of them have been for a full demolition of a contributing structure in a historic district as of yet. So I, it's just like a thing that's literally that thing haunts me because those I drive by those buildings all the time. And uh, I go into them often. So um, that said, um, there's a few other things. Um, if, if you can't make it in person, so being on Zoom doesn't count for a quorum. Your vote counts uh, for those who vote. Um, their vote. Your vote counts. However, for every commissioner who does have to go on Zoom because of an emergency, because you're out of state, because you're not feeling well, before, because of whatever reason, um, legal has requested or has reminded us, and Chris, you can jump in whenever, that everybody's cameras have to be on and your names have to be. So this is like going forward, just this, just going forward. Um, and uh, let me see. Yeah, and try to consider this basically in person. The state created this policy to be in person. We could debate about the, what the situation with the COVID is and with technology and many other things, but the state, it is state statute. It goes way beyond any control that I have. You know, if it were for me, I would also be doing this via Zoom and allowing everybody to be everywhere, but it's not up to me. I am, but, you know, a humble bureaucrat. <laughs> no, but, but seriously, I'm, uh, the final thing I did want to say is I am, you have no idea how absolutely grateful. I think I can, I don't know if I can speak for all of staff, but I can speak at least for myself working with you week in and week out in one of the most intense commissions in the city. We meet over 20 times a year. This is a huge commitment that all of you are making. Uh, and all of you do need personal time. All of you do have family emergencies. All of you are human. I live for this commission. <laughs> <laughs> um, Don't ask to see his tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> but I did, I did want to <laughs> express on the record how profoundly grateful I am for your service, for your time, your generosity, your knowledge, your, inf your profound wisdom, knowledge, and generosity in shaping the future of Bloomington's past, if that makes any <clears throat> sense. Um, how Bloomington will be connected to its living landscape going forward. So I just wanted to leave it on a high note. I'm just really grateful for everybody here. And um, yeah, basically we have this situation where it says it's, um, that it's hybrid, but it's mainly hybrid, I think, more for the petitioners than for us. But that's where we're All at. Right. Thanks, Gloria. And do we have any information about our violations? So I am still waiting to hear back from legal on some of our older cases. Chris? I do have a <laughs> growing list of newer cases that I haven't been able to send NOVs out for. But um, there are some cases. Uh, basically, I wanted to, for today, my goal was to actually bring a very good update on what's going on with all of the NOVs. However, last year, I, sorry, last week, I wasn't in, in town. And I basically, the only thing I can update you is that you will get a much heftier update in our next <coughs> meeting, I hope, not on wood, um, because yeah, there are, there has, yeah, it's getting up to like six or seven or eight cases right now and in different neighborhoods for different uh, levels. But first I need to notice, give a notice of violation to the owners so that they can make the decision of to restore or to apply for a retroactive certificate of appropriateness. All right, thanks, Gloria. Do we have any new business? 
I don't hear any. Um, old business. Nope. Okay. We had somebody just join us. Do you know who that is, Gloria? Uh, I mean, it just came on. Uh, S V A L A V L at I D I U. No. All right. Uh, public comments. If anybody has a comment online, you can use the raise your hand feature. Okay. As uh, somebody has, wait. Oh, uh, Richard Lewis. Sorry, uh, very one quick thing. Uh, I know I know it's late, and I just wanted to quickly check in with Gloria. I sent an email about some porch columns that have been removed on a house uh, that is uh, considered notable in the Greater Prospect Hill Historic District, and I didn't know if that's that on, is on your working list. That is on my working list. Yes. Perfect. All right. Thank you all. I'll leave that alone then. And thank you for all. Thank you to Gloria, and thank you to all of you as members who, who serve in the way that you do. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you for coming. Uh, any other comments? All right, we're adjourned. <laughs>